Hello, and welcome to Devos with Dre's Better Half. And I'm Kara, Dre's Better Half. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about Approve. That's a name that I've given our devotional tonight. And we're going to begin in Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul approved of his, that is Stephen's, execution. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come together to study the your word that you have gifted to us. Thank you, Lord, for your word that we don't have to wonder uh, who you are, what you are about, what you have planned for us, because you have revealed so much in your word, God. Lord, I just uh, pray for our listeners, Holy Spirit, that you would make it applicable to them today, Lord, in whatever situations that they are going through. And I just uh, pray that you would bless them, bless their households, and that you would bless their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So you have been reviewing Acts with uh, Andre. And in this previous passage in chapter 7 of Acts, we see that the religious leaders are jealous of Stephen's ministry and they have convinced these people to bring these false charges against Stephen. So we're reading Stephen's famous speech where he's essentially giving like this oral history of Israel. Like he begins with Abraham and then he goes to Joseph and then Moses and then he jumps all the way even to Solomon. But then Stephen's speech comes to an abrupt end when he begins to accuse the religious leaders of the very same sin that their forefathers were also guilty of, murdering the messengers that God would send to the people of Israel. And in fact, at this time, they did the very same thing, murdering Jesus, the Son of God, whom God had sent. And when the religious leaders heard this, they became furious at Stephen. And so we're going to pick up with our next part of this passage in Acts 7, verse 54. Acts 7, verse 54. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Now when they, that is the religious leaders, heard these things, they were enraged and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. So the first point of my devotional today is that I can be a hypocrite too. So we see in Acts 7 verse 54 that Stephen's audience is pretty much tracking along with Stephen until he starts accusing them of this sin. And it's interesting because we see a very similar situation occur in the Gospels. 
So if you will now turn with me to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, verse 54. Is that correct? Oh, that's why. Luke chapter 11, verse 45. It'll make more sense if you start at verse 45. One of the lawyers answered him, him being Jesus, Teacher, in saying these things, you insult us also. So previously, Jesus was talking about the Pharisees, and he said some things that offended the Pharisees. And then apparently the lawyers are taking offense to this as well. Verse 46, and he said, Woe to you, lawyers, also, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, whom your fathers killed. So you are witnesses, and you consent to the deeds of your fathers, for they killed him, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge you did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. As he went away from there, the scribes and the Pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say, and to catch him in something that he might say. So it's interesting that here in this passage, we see a similar situation occurring because Jesus is bringing the same accusation towards these religious leaders. Hey, your forefathers, they would murder every messenger that the Father sent to bring you a word. And in fact, you are still murdering the prophets today. The interesting thing is that Jesus mentioned how you uh, consent with what your fathers did. And this word in the Greek, consent, is the same word that is also used in Acts where it talks about that Saul approved of Stephen's execution. And so in the Greek, this word means it's, uh, I guess you could say it's almost kind of like a communal understanding. Like we all are in agreement about this thing. We're all in agreement about this evil and we approve of it. And Jesus was telling the religious leaders this too because during Jesus' time, they would often build monuments to honor the prophets who were martyred. And he's bringing out this fact that you're being hypocritical and that you honor the ones who were murdered, but you are still murdering his prophets today. And so my first point is, I can be a hypocrite too because, you know, it's really easy to read these passages and be like, oh, that's really obvious. Like, they are obviously in the wrong. But we can be guilty of the same things too. For example, the story about the manna, right? God gave the people of Israel very specific rules. You can gather only so much on these days and so much on this day. But if you gather more than what is allowed of you, it will rot the next day. And even though God performed previously all of these miracles and was currently performing this miracle of raining down bread from heaven, they still for some reason just chose not to trust God and they would still uh, gather more manna than what they needed. And when they woke up, they found that all their manna had rotted away. You know, and we think, oh my gosh, like, why would you do that? Just obey the Lord. How could you distrust him? But we're still guilty of the same thing today. Like, we'll say, 
oh, I need Jesus, but I still need my astrology, what my astrology sign says too, or uh, I need my six figures and, and I need Jesus too, or I need my boyfriend and girlfriend, but I need Jesus too. Like Jesus is still not enough to us, even though he is the bread of life. Um, another example maybe uh, where we can be hypocritical is like just as the religious leaders of that time, you know, they recognized that their forefathers were in the wrong in murdering the prophets. And in fact, it's interesting because even in Jewish literature, they put more emphasis than what we even read in the scriptures. So they had this like very strong understanding about how shameful it was with how they mistreated these messengers that God sent. And then today, in the same way, we hopefully realize that, you know, the witch hunts during the Puritan times probably weren't our greatest idea, you know, just because a woman has a freckle or because she's good at something or maybe because some accident just happens to happen around them, suddenly she's labeled a witch. I think nowadays we realize that these were like really like hardcore prejudices against women that were just, um, you know, acted upon to the extreme where you're burning women for these uh, little things. But today, if anyone challenges our, even our church traditions, sometimes our first response is like to label them and to gossip like behind their back instead of approaching them and having a conversation in love, you know? So we can still be guilty of being hypocritical too, just as these religious leaders have been called out as well. Amen. Oh, really?